Hey, what is up guys, it's Thunderstruck115, and today, we are going to be taking a look at a video that's bashing the Microsoft Activision acquisition. This comes from a YouTuber by the name of Tech Syndicate, who, surprisingly, is not a PlayStation fanboy, at least not to my knowledge. But anyways, let's go ahead and get right into this. We need to talk about the Microsoft Activision Blizzard merger acquisition thing. I saw a poll online, and this is not one of those things where I saw one person say something, and I'm going to outrage farm based upon what one obscure person said. I saw a poll and it said, is this going to be good for consumers? Yes or no? And it was an overwhelming yes vote. So I just want to point out that this poll was made by fucking Dreamcast guy, who is not only an infamous PlayStation fanboy, but he also worded the yes response in such a way that it makes the people seem bad or like they're in support of monopolies. And yet, despite that, they still got 58% of the vote. Meanwhile, only 18% said that this was terrible. And again, since Dreamcast guy is a PlayStation fanboy, there's a good chance that a lot of his viewers are PlayStation fanboys as well. So that should tell you just how much people are in support of this. Since when was consolidation ever good for consumers? I'm glad you asked Tech Syndicate, because in this case it actually is a good thing, because not only are games like Call of Duty still going to come to PlayStation, but they are also going to come to other platforms such as the Nintendo Switch, Nvidia streaming service, and Amazon streaming service, and if you're on Xbox or PC, you'll have the option to get these games via Game Pass, instead of having to spend $70 on these games every single year. And if you want another example of consolidation being a good thing. I don't think there is a single person that is going to argue that Netflix is better now than it was roughly 10 years ago when pretty much all the shows you wanted to watch were available on Netflix, or even if not all of them, most of them were. Now there's a whole bunch of TV and movie streaming services that you have to subscribe to to get everything that you want to watch. Now I'm not trying to say that everything should be under one company, but what I am saying is that some consolidation is a good thing, such as the case here with the Microsoft Activision deal. Look what Disney has done with all of the brands and everything that it has acquired. But first off, I want to show you where some of this is coming from. It's not just the console wars of nonsense. It's not just a bunch of fans of Microsoft Xbox just being like, yeah, eat it, suck it, PlayStation fans. A lot of it starts with this message that we're hearing, and I'll play it right now. Well, let's continue this um, narrative. Good news, I think, is starting to prevail that ultimately, if it's good for the consumer, the government can't just block everything. And right now, the government's been in a block everything. And as we've said repeatedly, in many of these... So did you hear what he said there? If it's good for the consumer. And when I first heard that, I was like, oh, he's going to argue that it's bad for the consumer because he's saying if, but let's keep going. These examples, these deals are actually good for consumers. They're good for pricing. They're good for choice. And they're good for pricing. They're good for choice. Having one corporate overlord own everything is good for pricing and good for choice. You know, that's not everything owned by one corporate overlord, though. Even after acquiring Activision Blizzard, Microsoft will still be behind both Sony and Nintendo in the video game industry when Microsoft's two biggest competitors in the gaming industry have a larger market share than them, then that is not a monopoly. And what's even more ironic is that people like Tech Syndicate only complain about monopolization and consolidation when Microsoft dares to get some exclusive games, but when Sony and Nintendo do the exact same thing, not a peep from them. Kind of like how Sony made Final Fantasy 16 a PS5 exclusive, or how Nintendo made Bayonetta exclusive to their consoles when previously it was multi-platform. But what's even more ironic is that even though Microsoft's acquiring Activision Blizzard, they're actually bringing their games to more platforms than ever. For example, the Nintendo Switch, Nvidia streaming service, Amazon streaming service, xCloud, and you're given more options to buy it with Xbox Game Pass. So yes, this deal is good for consumer choice and for pricing, as you have more options to buy and play their games than before. So back in the day, our government used to break up monopolies by saying it's bad for consumers, it's bad for the market, we don't want to have just one company that controls everything. But now a lot of these companies have been going to the lawmakers and saying, listen, this whole, you know, like anti-monopoly thing, that wasn't to try to stop the corporations from becoming too big. That was 
mainly to protect the people. And we believe that it's better for the people if there's less competition. Sorry to cut him off in the middle of a sentence, but he kind of goes on for a bit. But this doesn't reduce competition. If anything, this actually increases competition. If you recall the charts I showed you in the last segment, you'll know that Microsoft has the smallest share of the gaming industry of the big three console manufacturers. And when Microsoft's share is proportionally smaller, it means that their competition isn't going to be as compelled to innovate and improve their experience as they just become complacent sitting where they are because they know that their competition is so bad that they'll remain market leaders regardless. But when Microsoft makes a big move, like acquiring Activision Blizzard, and gives them some ammunition to use against Sony and Nintendo, all of a sudden the gap between their market shares isn't as big, which will pressure their competitors to actually improve the experience for the consumers. And we saw this last generation. The Xbox One got off to such a bad start that it sort of just propagated throughout the entire generation and Sony just had this unshakable lead, and you could tell that they sort of got complacent. Meanwhile, Xbox, knowing that they were behind, were scrambling to try and innovate to win back their consumer base. And as such, we got things like a bigger emphasis on backwards compatibility than Sony, as well as things like Game Pass. Meanwhile, Sony wasn't as motivated to do so because of their dominant position. Now, to be clear, I'm not trying to say that Sony wasn't trying at all. Obviously, they were. I'm just saying, if you look at what Microsoft has done since the release of the Xbox One and PS4 versus what Sony has done, it's clear that Microsoft is the one making more radical moves. Because one giant mega company can come in and control the entire supply chain, and we can lower the prices for them, and we can take better care of them, and it's more convenient because now instead of having to go through multiple different companies and go to one store to get your cheese and go to a different store to get your your vegetables we can go to one store and buy everything and it's cheaper and easier for the consumers so we be we believe that monopoly laws were designed to protect consumers from having to deal with nonsense and since everything under one roof is good we can essentially make the world a better place. That's kind of what they're saying. My guy, if the whole point of that statement was to convince me that consolidation of the industry is a bad thing, then you have done the complete opposite. Like, you use the grocery store example, and personally, I like being able to go to one place and get all the groceries I need for the week. In fact, I find it kind of annoying when the one store that I usually go to doesn't have everything that I need, and so I need to stop by, like, a different food line or some shit. But again, if I can get more games on Game Pass instead of having to just spend $70 on them outright, that's a positive, because you still have the option to buy it for $70 if you want. Want. Plus, you could say it's going to different stores, because not only is Call of Duty staying on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC, but it's also going over to the Switch, it's going to NVIDIA streaming service, it's going to Amazon streaming service, and it's going over to xCloud. So now it's not just the Xbox storefront that has everything, but also those other platforms. And if you still want to keep buying Call of Duty on PlayStation, you can. We hear that narrative from him the judge who rejected this all right so here, here they're all like talking about protecting consumers by allowing massive monopolies and mergers she says it's not the harm to sony we care about it's the harm to the consumers so by and and that she she blocked the ftc's complaints this face right here this this is the person who decided that, you know, they should be allowed to merge because it's good for the consumers. Because it is good for the consumer. All the Activision games that have currently been released will stay on all the platforms that they're already on. Call of Duty will continue to release on all the platforms it already has, in addition to a bunch of other platforms that didn't have it, and you also have the option to get these games through Game Pass. The only potential harm you could really see is that games in other Activision Blizzard IPs might not come to PlayStation. Which, on one hand, I am kind of against exclusivity as a whole, because I do believe that more people having access to video games is nothing but a positive. And in the perfect ideal world, it would be amazing if games like Halo got brought over to the PS5, or if God of War got brought over to the Switch, or if Tears of the Kingdom got brought over to the Xbox. 
But as much as I would love for that to happen, I know that's just not realistic. So if exclusivity is going to exist, then the three companies should be able to play by the same rules. Again, Sony did this with games like Final Fantasy 16, Bloodborne, the Spider-Man games, and they would have done it to Starfield if Xbox hadn't bought Bethesda first. Now, maybe I wouldn't really have a problem if this dude was also calling out Sony and Nintendo for this, because then at least he'd be consistent, but nowhere on this channel does he do that. So it's good for the consumers that Microsoft is going to have a huge share of the market, massive share of the market, and that they're going to be able to put all that stuff on their console and withhold it from other consoles. Again, where's the same energy for Sony and Nintendo? Because not only do they also make their games exclusive, but they also have a bigger market share than Microsoft even after the Activision deal. So yeah, Tech Syndicate, I'm going to have to ask you to keep that same energy. How is that good for the consumers? Oh, well, they're going to give them a, a better uh, thing because then they can get all this stuff under one umbrella. They can get all their stuff from Bethesda and its software. And since they've got it all, they'll just lower the prices. Every piece of empirical data shows that when companies like Amazon exist and they once they completely destroy all the mom and pops and all the small competition, they don't lower their prices. That would be insane for them to do. Once there's no other choices for the consumers, they can just raise their prices as high as they want. And that is what they have done. All right, now that is a straight up lie because number one, Amazon does not hold a monopoly over the online shopping market because websites like eBay exist. Second of all, in many cases, I can buy something off of Amazon for cheaper than I can find it in an actual store like Walmart or Target. Now, this isn't always the case. Sometimes I can actually find something in the Walmart or Target that's cheaper than I find on Amazon. But back to Microsoft, they never said they were gonna lower the individual prices of the actual games. No, the reason it's cheaper is because they're now also available in Game Pass. <laughs> Which, let me tell you, with a franchise that releases yearly like Call of Duty, subscribing to Game Pass is ultimately going to save you a lot of money in the long run. And that's even after they increased the price from $15 to $17 for Game Pass Ultimate. Like, a year of Game Pass Ultimate would come down to $204. Three Call of Duty games would be $210 ever since they increased the price to $70. And keep in mind, you're getting access to that as well as a whole bunch of other games, both first party and third party. And it's not even just the new COD games, you'll also get the old ones as well. Like, hell, need I remind everybody that for some reason Activision is still charging $60 for Black Ops 2 in the year of our Lord 2023? Oh, and uh, the DLCs are all still full priced as well. If Activision on their own isn't willing to lower the price, then Microsoft scooping them up and then putting their games in Game Pass, which is ultimately a cheaper price overall, is better for the consumer. That's why we've seen record inflation. It's not because we're printing gazillions of dollars. That's a small piece of it. The truth is that the companies are just extremely greedy. <laughs> Okay, now I'm not gonna claim like I'm some economic expert, but if you've ever taken an economics class, the very first concept that you will learn about is the concept of supply and demand. If you increase the supply of something, but demand remains the same, the value of that item is going to lower. So if you start printing a shit ton of money like the Federal Reserve has been doing since 2020, that means that currency is going to lower in value. And when currency lowers in value, that is inflation. In fact, you want to know how bad it is? 80% of all US currency that has ever been printed has been printed since January of 2020. And that's 80% of currency that existed in late 2021, early 2022. Which, if you're good at math, that means there is five times the amount of currency in circulation now than there was prior to 2020. Now, I'm not gonna say that corporate greed didn't play a factor in this. I'm sure it did. But here's the thing. Corporations are always fucking greedy. And yet, despite that, we have not seen record-breaking inflation until the Federal Reserve started printing a fuck ton of money. <laughs> And that's what happens when only a few companies control everything. They can set the prices to be whatever they want and you have to pay it or go without. Let's go over some reminders here. This is all the stuff that Disney has been allowed to acquire. Just all this stuff. And there are so many interesting franchises that Disney has acquired and they have just kind of disappeared. We don't really hear about them anymore. And that's because they're not billion dollar franchises. 
That sounds like a Disney problem, not a Microsoft problem. And this is kind of what I want to look at this for companies like Microsoft and Tencent. Those are the two of the biggest companies in the world right now when it comes to the share of the video game industry. No, Microsoft is still behind Sony and Nintendo when it comes to the video game industry. Now, as a whole, Microsoft is the second biggest corporation in the world behind only Amazon. But when it comes to the gaming space, which is what this Activision deal is strictly about, no, Microsoft is not the biggest. Now, obviously, they are still pretty big in the gaming space, just not as big as something like Sony or Nintendo. But once you get that big, you can start to set different guidelines and completely squash culture. They start shoving everything into this tiny little box that everything has to be made a certain way, uh, the certain formula has to be used, and we have to produce stuff that's gonna you know, hit mass appeal. That leaves out a lot of the fringes. A lot of the counterculture is just completely gone. When one company is allowed to control this much of our culture, um, it kind of starts to destroy the culture. On the contrary, Microsoft is one of the best companies when it comes to game preservation. And already we have seen this deal do a good deal in preserving old gaming culture. Because once the FTC's appeal to block the acquisition was shot down, Activision went ahead and fixed the servers for all the old COD games. Games like Black Ops 1, 2, and the original Modern Warfare trilogy had been infested with hackers ever since 2017. Meanwhile, World at War had been infested with hackers since 2013, at least on Xbox. And for all those years, you were completely unable to play the multiplayer for those games on console without dealing with hackers constantly. And Activision on their own were content to just sit on their hands and let these games run rampant with hackers. But then when Microsoft entered the picture, all of a sudden these games are fixed and now I can enjoy playing games like Black Ops 1, 2, World at War, and the OG Modern Warfare trilogy again. Something that I have not been able to do in years at this point. Additionally, Microsoft is the one leading the industry when it comes to backwards compatibility, as Sony's PS5 only has backwards compatibility for PS4 titles. Meanwhile, the only thing Nintendo has done for game preservation on the Switch is their god-awful Switch Online service, which is a complete joke. As for less popular niche stuff, Microsoft has not been afraid to fund that, as they funded games like Psychonauts 2, Hi-Fi Rush, Grounded, and Pentiment. But look at this. This is another thing. Warner Brothers, they're the other thing. Like, you know, you got Disney and you got Warner Brothers and they own all this and we've got Multiverses the game, which I guess looks fun, but I mean, it's a good way to look and just see how ridiculous all this is. You have Superman in the same game as Arya Stark in the same game as Bugs Bunny in the same game as Shaggy in the same game as Batman in the same game as Tom and Jerry in the same game as Wonder Woman in the same game as Adventure Time. Finn the Human. That's what I was looking for. Now, I guess some people think that that's awesome, but um, it just... It's weird. It's really weird that all of this culture is just kind of slammed together. Okay, I think it's a little gross. Whether the game's fun or not, and all this is make-believe and it's all silly, but I really miss the individual quirkiness that each individual thing has, each individual brand. And this is just me ranting right now. My guy, Multiverses is a crossover game. It's not canon to any of these specific universes. The whole point is, hey, what if we took a bunch of these different IPs and had them cross over together and fight each other? That would be cool, right? Kind of like Kingdom Hearts or Super Smash Bros. But obviously Batman is still its own thing, Scooby-Doo is still its own thing, Game of Thrones is still its own thing, and the same goes for other crossover games as well. Like, yeah, you might have characters like Mario, Sonic, Samus, or a bunch of other characters in Smash, but they're still their own franchises and IPs. Like, the Mario series is still the Mario series. Metal Gear Solid is still Metal Gear Solid. Metroid is still Metroid. Legend of Zelda is still Legend of Zelda. So on and so forth. Like, are you just opposed to the idea of crossover games in general? Even if you are, that's still not a good point to make. Alright, I think that's kind of what's going to happen with all this Microsoft stuff. If we get that much under one umbrella, it's going to be bad for culture. And that's the main thing that I really care about. 
not so. I mean, the money is really important, and I think it will be bad for consumers. It will be it will remove choices for, from consumers. You'll have to choose one platform over the other to make sure that you get the games that you want. And a lot of franchises are just going to vanish because they don't measure up. And, you know, a big company like that, they can't focus on everything. They're going to put a gazillion dollars in just a few big silos and all the rest of it's going to be like, whatever. Like, what, look what happened to Deus Ex. Like, where the hell is that? Your whole argument hinges on this hypothetical scenario that Microsoft is even going to do that. And if you look at all the passion projects and more niche indie games that Microsoft has funded and published, yeah, the evidence doesn't suggest that they are even going to do that. Now, I know some companies have done this. For example, Activision Blizzard, prior to the buyout, has abandoned series such as Warcraft or Singularity. But Microsoft in general, nah, they usually don't do that, at least not themselves. Now, maybe some studios under Microsoft that have been given greater autonomy might do that. Like, for example, the reason we haven't gotten the new Banjo-Kazooie game is because Rare just doesn't want to make one, and they've been instead focusing on both Sea of Thieves and Everwild. But it's not Microsoft, the publisher, that is doing that. It's these individual studios. They're probably busy working on some nonsense. I think it got sold. I don't even know. But, yeah, it's it's weird. And, and then when you look at the cost of these things, and this is, again, I'm just kind of ranting out of turn right now, but... When a company like Microsoft buys something like this, they don't like to use the word buy. They're, they're, they're shifting value around. It's like they'll trade value in their stock for all of that property, and their value stays the same. You know what I mean? They've, just, they've given up this much of their own value in their stocks and whatever money, maybe, and they've acquired all these things. No, Microsoft isn't giving up their own stocks. That's not how that works. Microsoft is giving $68.7 billion in capital to the stockholders of Activision Blizzard. So to them, their value is still the same. And they're still living by, you know, taking out loans based upon their stocks. And that's how they live because they don't have to pay taxes on the loans they've taken out. That's how the rich do it. Anyway, um, we'll have to see what happened. I know the FTC is going to fight this. A very bad precedent because something on this scale it's huge uh, and if the FTC loses its appeal we're gonna see so much consolidation so quickly and it's gonna start transferring wealth to the top even faster hopefully this will go through I'm making the video before I know what's happening with this but hopefully the appeal uh, becomes a thing hopefully they get a little more focus but uh, this is not going to be good for you. This is not a. This is not something that you should be gloating about on social media. This is not a way to like score one against the other console people that you hate so much. You say that this isn't going to be good for the consumer, and yet your only rationale for this is a hypothetical scenario that Microsoft will then in turn fuck over its customers. Which, again, they're not going to be a monopoly after this acquisition. They are still heavily competing against Sony and Nintendo. While it is admittedly entertaining seeing PlayStation fanboys lose their shit over this deal, but the main reason I'm excited for this acquisition is because it means all of Activision's games will come together. Game Pass, which directly benefits me as an Xbox user and a Game Pass subscriber. Meanwhile, it also benefits people who play on Switch, xCloud, Amazon streaming service, or Nvidia streaming service because they will also get access to Activision's games when they previously didn't. And these are all tangible reasons to want this to happen, yet you have not provided any tangible, actual felt reasons for why this deal shouldn't go through. Alright, at this point he just goes over a bunch of brands that Tencent owns, and yeah, that's not really relevant to this video, so I'm gonna go ahead and end it off here. So anyways, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more, and tell me what you think of this whole Activision deal and Tech Syndicate's take on it. Anyways, that's it. Peace!